This time he gets a war film right. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for De Five Bloods. This is the latest Spike Lee film that came out earlier in the year. I've never got around to watching it until now because I'm trying to wrap up my best films of 2020. I can say that if this had been handled by any other director, if this had been handled by any other kind of production, I feel that this would be a complete and utter disaster. Really, this feels like a jigsaw puzzle from different puzzle pieces crammed together and it works considering how mishmash this film feels like in terms of concept and also just watching it as it's being put together as it's playing out before you most of the time in the back of my brain i kept on thinking this shouldn't be working but it is how is that possible and i will say that it's really Spike Lee learning his lessons from Miracle at St. Anne, which was his first attempt at making a war film, and honestly, it's a terrible movie. It's a really, really bad movie. And keeping the trend that he kind of had with Black K.K. Klansman, which I, I feel is a better movie than this film, but I can appreciate the ambition and the effort that he puts into this film. It's about four Vietnam War vets who return to this valley in Vietnam to, one, find their sergeant who died in the valley, as well as the gold that they recovered and said they would come back for. This film actually kind of reminds me really, really out there, but going back. This is a Casper Van Dien movie that I watched with my dad back in 2000, and it was about these four Vietnam War vets returning to the area and just having all their PTSD and whatnot come out. And really, after watching that film, every single Vietnam War movie about going back to the area, I kept on referring to this film in the back of my mind. No idea why, but I find that that's a trait that is kind of reminiscent with other Vietnam War films. No, I haven't seen The Deer Hunter yet, and I admittedly should see that film, because that's what a lot of people keep telling me to watch. This movie had a cool premise in terms of incorporating current day politics, incorporating the struggle of African Americans all the way back from the First World War to the Vietnam War to now, because Spike Lee's about that. If you're not into that thing, then just stay away from this movie. I could say that you could watch this perspective, because he gives a pretty good representation, as well as, oddly enough, dropping random history facts throughout the movie. There was a few times where I kept on thinking that I was watching a different version of the Ken Burns Vietnam War documentary, which I've already said you should watch it, and I'm saying it again, you should definitely watch that series. If you were really weirded out by changing aspect ratios, this movie does it in a way that kind of works where it really shouldn't. The film constantly switches back and forth between documentary real footage to HD footage to photos to makeshift documentary real footage. When they go back to showing the soldiers fighting and showing Chadwick Boseman's character, it refers back to documentary real-life footage. And not only is that in the quality, but it's also in how the shots are set. I would say 90% of them are footage real-like shots, angles that I saw in the Vietnam War documentary series. There's maybe one or two that are a little bit over dramatic. Particularly, there's one that made me chuckle, actually, that wasn't supposed to make me chuckle. But otherwise, I think that this is a really cool attempt at putting you into this zone, putting you into this reliving history moment. Because when you go back to modern day, it is the story of these four vets and how they have gotten along in life and how some of them just haven't at all. Delroy Lindo's character, Paul, is a very, very jaded character. His performance in this film is amazing. He makes you hate him, he makes you feel sorry for him, and he makes you pity him. Because this is a guy who literally has nothing left for him except his own demons. His demons have ruled his life and ruined his life, and yet he can't accept that. He's still holding on to it's someone else's fault when really it's his own demons that have been holding him back. And on this trip to recover the gold, they are kind of going back and forth between their PTSD, between their own it kind of dislikes of each other as well as the Vietnamese people. It's at the midway point that this film changes from a reconnecting with their past and reliving history to kind of a weird action movie, but kind of like a Clint Eastwood modern day action film. It, it's, it almost is a bit unjarring how it just switches over to this. But again, it works a lot better than it should. And I think that's because of Spike Lee's direction with the film. There's a random ass monologue where Daryl Lindo just straight up talks crazy to you, directly, to you, for a good few minutes in the film. And it's a monologue that people have been talking about. And while I would say it's, it's not as well written as I think it is, the intensity of it is jarring. It will pull you in. It will make you forget that you have anything else in your hands. It will just 
enrapture you. And as messy as the film has been throughout the whole viewing experience, the ending is just as messy. Characters die for the sake of dying, I feel. There's maybe a sense of loss for one of them, but there's just some deaths that just happen for the sake of happening, and that was my biggest issue with Miracle at St. Anne, aside from the length, which this movie does have a little bit too long of a runtime, I will admit that, its runtime is very, very long. Miracle at St. Anne had an atrocious runtime. It had atrocious characters. It also killed off everyone at the end of the movie, almost, for no other reason to just kill them. And this movie has a similar problem, but it is thankfully a bit better. It's it's a little bit more fluid and kind of makes more sense to the story even if it doesn't as much as it should. Five Bloods is a exceptional film considering it should be a piece of garbage in terms of how it was put together, but it's not. It's really decently constructed. The editing, while kind of all over the place and a little bit too long, is pretty well focused. I think the performances from everyone in this film is fantastic. It's it's really, really something to see Chadwick Boseman in this film, considering the guy was dying, literally dying, from his cancer. And he's so good in this film for the short amount of time he's in. Delroy Lindo, as I said, very, very good. He should definitely get an Oscar nomination. This is one of those jaded characters. It reminds me of Melissa Leo from The Fighter of All Movies because she's an absolute evil bitch in that film, and Delroy Lindo's kind of in that same sort of category in terms of what his character is portraying. He also sweats a lot, but this movie was actually filmed in Vietnam, which, again, very cool to see that happen. I, I was kind of expecting studio stuff, but it's, it's, it's filmed out there. Five Bloods is definitely a Spike Lee fan enthusiast film. If you like his work, you'll like this movie. It's better than most. It's not as good as his best, but it's still a very decent film. Um, I would say it's on the same kind of category of Black K.K. Klansman. It's definitely better at Miracle at St. Anne. He and in the end, I'm gonna give the Five Bloods a 5 out of 7. It's a lot better than it has any right to be considering how it's put together, but that's probably one of the most interesting and most compelling factors of this film is that it's a lot better than it should be considering just how weirdly put together it is. Anyways guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.